in terms of your day job and where you are now, what, what, how do you describe the last two months? What, what do you think <clears throat> well, went I'm, on? What do you think is going on right now? You know, I, I think just in general, obviously, the volatility that we're seeing in the markets is something that um, I don't think anybody can ignore, especially the big shareholders out there. I will say, though, that at MOLAS, we're, we're not seeing any of this volatility in the fundamentals of our business. Uh, and that's sort of what, to me, you know, to see sort of a disconnect. I mean, the market obviously is viewing something in the future as bad. Uh, and, but I'll tell you one thing. I mean, there is still, obviously, here at home, a lot of economic growth uh, to celebrate. There's a lot of confidence in the part of our clients. Uh, where our business is good. Um, but, you know, this kind of shenanigans going on here in the U.S., the uncertainty around Brexit, we'll see that come to a point next week, uh, the lack of leadership in the EU, I mean, all of this, on top of that, the trade situation with China and the talks, I think everybody's on edge. But in terms of funding, whether it's short term or, or, or anything in, in the, like credit related, spreads there, junks, all that stuff, there, there were some signs of stress that may or may not have been real there. And, and it seemed to come after a couple, after Powell first with the long way from neutral and then second with the autopilot on the, you know, on the balance sheet. There, there were people who were saying that there were, there were signs of, of some, you know, pending illiquidity that could be problematic for right. financial markets. Did you see any? Listen, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, I, we, we believe that the credit markets are still very healthy, but you're right. There was a lot of discussion about that, and spreads began to at least right. seem that they were going to widen. But, um, you know, I, I believe in what has gone on and propelled business confidence, which was initially two years ago with the onslaught of the deregulatory process mm -hmm. together with the tax reform that put a lot of people in a much better situation. So, I, I, listen, if the kind of volatility that we're seeing in the markets continues and persists for some time, it may start to really zap the confidence inside the C-suite in the boardroom. But I, I don't think that we're seeing that kind of uh, doubt the way you're seeing on a lot of the So was airwaves. Jay Powell right or wrong about the strength of the economy in December when it came to raising rates? And for him feeling comfortable to do that, there was obviously a big debate about it. And we got the numbers last, uh, last week. And but is that a reason to raise rates if there's no inflation? Well, but it, but it also. Well, I mean, I mean, this is the this is the tug and and, and uh, you know the push and the pull here. I mean, if 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 you raise rates, you're going to stop. I mean, that job growth number that that uh, we last saw was phenomenal. I just you wonder know? if if uh, oil and copper and rates give us financial false flags that that aren't based on the underlying economy. Can't can't financial guys? influence that? I mean, does global demand for oil have to fall off? Does, do, do we have to know that the, the economy is in trouble for copper to hit lows? Or can people who trade well, those things, can people who trade those, be, if, is it always a sign? Is it always a, 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 an indicator or sometimes is it a false indicator, a false, false negative? Right. I mean, I do think that, we, you know, when you sit here and the rapidity of information flow in the back and forth, we can talk ourselves into and become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. Uh, again, in the underlying fundamentals of our business, we see and are as strong as it was six months ago. I mean, so again, it's, it, there's a little bit of disconnect. And I know from the veterans who've been on Wall Street for a long time, they're saying, look, you, the markets know what they're doing. But we're going to hear a lot from, from uh, Schumer and Pelosi about the, the pain caused for people not getting paychecks and, and families not being able to make ends meet. And you know, it's going to be all pointed at petulant Trump. We keep yep. hearing it again and again and again. It, it does take two to tango. They, they could do two and a half billion, right? And, and then immediately the government would open. So all the people that they're talking about don't need to be put in that. Are, in their mind, don't you think these people are pawns in the game that they're playing as well? If they really want, if they were so concerned <clears throat> about the people that are getting hurt, couldn't they? Or, or both sides are so entrenched that they, you, you don't problems. have a voice. Uh, Joe, you Joe, can't talk. Listen, the, the incentives in place in Washington right now do not point to any of that. But I think happening. it's cynical it, to, to hear them talk about how, how, they how, how, how badly they're feeling for them and, and to know full well that they're just as intractable in their... Sure, but you can point, point on both sides. We I know you can, but we don't hear them, but, you know, but, but check Joseph, out the media. 
I think we all agree that there's probably a place in the middle. The problem is that, it, that these sides have been set, and I have Dunder to dare I say, in. the heels, though, were initially set by, by the president, and that's what made it very different. No, 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 no. You Listen, really no, disagree. No, that's not a fact. Opportunity here. Both sides, the incentives are to yield oh, to the primary right. base. I don't there disagree is no with that. Way that. There's no way. But what's, and, and, you know, it's all. And there was glee when the president made the move to say, we're shutting down the government unless you do this. There was glee on the other side, too, to say, great, we've got them. But why um, keep saying that we're talking about a 2,000, you know, that's the, the, the straw man that they keep putting up. We don't want a 2,000 mile concrete wall and we're never going to say yes but no one's talking about that anymore they're talking about all these different ways to, to secure the border what, with a what, very what? small amount of money and they, and you know they, I would have left the meeting yesterday too if someone said Trump said if I 30, if I open the government now within 30 days are we going to be able to, to get a deal for the wall and she said no outright no and that's when he turned around and left but you don't you don't see that in the but that's because the look the wall has become a symbol that's the problem and he but he and he's made it he's made it the symbol and that's and, and that's the issue and, that we're at but, here now. And now it's not when about the practical reality. It's become, not about the practical reality. Andrew, when did the wall actually controlling illegal immigration? When did the wall become immoral? Do we do, do, do Schumer and Pelosi want to go down and tear down any of the existing structures we have? Because are they no, currently just, immoral? No, look, there's so many. Are they immoral too? Do we need to take them but all by down? By the way, as as a result of this conversation about the wall, we're not dealing with actually the real issues. Whether it's whether it's people who are overstaying uh, they their won't visas, talk, they won't whether put dreamers it's verify, whether all of these issues. By the way, I would imagine the conservatives would be saying to themselves. They are. The conservatives are saying the dreamers, we need the dreamers for the workforce. Let's do a deal. But there's nothing on the table. Well, we can't get into any of this without the wall. And that's why I believe next But who is the one who's saying we can't get into this without the wall? That's, that's the sides, point. That's the both point. Both sides, because they're intractable right now. Both sides.